Yesterday at the press conference, where I gave him a 9 out of 10, um, uh, Chris Luxon, in a broad view, said we've got a 100-day action plan. Much of that action plan is around, well, trying to reset and stabilise and set a new direction for the New Zealand e economy. Uh, one group that keep a weather eye on government policy and, and how this country is going is the New Zealand Initiative. Uh, a bunch of bright people... Um, some would say paid for by the evil, evil capitalists. Um, I find them a bunch of people who are pretty engaged with New Zealand and with a fair idea about how to, how to analyse data and policies. Uh, and I was really interested to their reaction to the new government um, and also to the agenda that we see being laid out um, by Chris Luxon uh, yesterday. So we're joined now from the New Zealand Initiative uh, by uh, our good friend, Dr Oliver Hartwich. Uh, Oliver, how are you, my friend? I'm very well. Good morning, Sean. How are you? Good. Good, thanks. Uh, first up, uh, oh, we're now the mic's a bit... Just give us a few more words. Yes, good morning. How are okay. you? Okay. Uh, it's, it's not great. We can live with it. We can live with it because we can also see you. Uh, yeah, just we have to get you a microphone for your computer. Um, Oliver, first up, what struck me about last Friday, not just culturally but I think economically, we have a government of massive change here. And they've signalled that they are going to do things quite differently, right? Yes, I would agree with that. Uh, it is a complete break from the last six years, especially from the last three. And I think that was confirmed again in the 100-day programme. So there's hardly anything left of the old Labour government's agenda uh, because it will all be undone. And I would say it's for the better that way. All right. Do we start then with a new direction or are we turning the clock back? Well, I think the first 100 days are really about turning the clock back because it's a massive clean-up job for the new government. They're getting rid of things like fair pay agreements. They're getting rid of the replacement to the Resource Management Act and they're reinstating the old one before actually doing their own new version of planning laws. And so the first 100 days will be just dominated by just correcting the mistakes of the past. And then once we're through the first 100 days, hopefully we'll get to something more positive, so we will actually see what the government is going to do itself to actually drive New Zealand forward. Mm. One thing largely absent, and this has been commented on, and no real emphasis in the, any of the coalition agreements on what we would call climate change, on, well, so-called the environment, which has, you know, the Greenies gnashing their teeth. We've got a return to oil and gas exploration uh, in this document, and it would, you have someone who has long argued that the emissions trading scheme should just be left to its own devices and that would deliver the goals that were set for us at the Paris Accord. Uh, do you think this government has embraced uh, your philosophy on that? Well, I would hope so, and it appears like that from just looking at the documents. You mentioned the clean car discount. I mean, this is one of those policies that never made sense to start with because we have an emissions trading scheme, as you just said, and therefore all the emissions from our transport sector are covered. You don't need to do things like the clean car discount. And similarly, um, when it comes to... Um, for example, coal imports running Huntley, all of that is covered by the emissions trading scheme. So actually, whether we have oil and gas exploration in this country doesn't make a difference at all to climate change emissions overall, because we have it all covered under the ETS. And therefore, if the government's moving that direction, if they say, as they do, that the ETS is our primary means of tackling climate change and carbon emissions, that's exactly how it should be. Mm. All right, let's look at um, the Reserve Bank um, and warnings yesterday from Adrian Orr that increased immigration is driving inflation. We are not out of the woods yet uh, e economically. Uh, we know the government is going to change the Reserve Bank Act to focus on price stability a little bit more. Does that really make a difference, uh, any of those policies, Oliver, or are we at the whim, if you like, of international markets? and we ride the waves, the troughs and waves of the world when it comes to the economy. Well, you know, it shouldn't really make much of a difference if we had a proper governor. Um, because once you have a proper governor who understands how monetary policy works, 
you can have a dual mandate where you include price stability and employment and it wouldn't matter because as any monetary economist of the last 40 years has known central banks can only really affect one thing and that's price stability they can have um, a temporary effect on employment but not a lasting one i think the current governor has ignored that eternal wisdom and this is where we are so uh, the reserve bank has actually flooded the markets with liquidity with cash in the last few years and we are paying the price and by the way it's not just the rbnz's and fault of course it is also of course we had a very profligate government until last week and um, all of this money is actually working its way through the economy driving up prices so when you look at the combined effect um, we had of course a reserve bank decision in australia last week where they said basically that is the end of it and there will not be any further hikes and uh, the oecd last night actually confirmed that in new zealand's case as the governor said yesterday there is still a chance that um, we will, might see another hike next year and interest rates will remain high until 2025. So our situation is difficult. It is right for the government to have a focus on price stability. It is right to actually signal this quite clearly to the Reserve Bank and say we're going to reduce your mandate to just a single focus on price stability as it used to be. And I think the Reserve Bank needs to have a, a very good look at itself, actually, to figure out what it has done. Oh, I know there have you. been rumblings that Adrian Orr should be, resign or be pushed. Well, Does really if that I were single Adrian person Orr, I would have offered difference? my resignation. What? I would have made, offered my resignation and a single person does make a difference because I think, sadly, the Reserve Bank has lost um, some credibility in the markets and that has something to do with the person of the governor. So if you installed a governor now with a very clear track record for price stability, take someone out of um, a central bank with that kind of reputation, I think markets would take that very seriously, would take it as a signal that New Zealand is going back to a more orthodox pathway to price stability.